In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use portals in React in order to create a pop-up element. And I'm gonna show you how to avoid all of the nasty problems people run into when trying to create a pop-up. Also, if you wanna learn everything you need to know about React, make sure to check out my full React course. I'm gonna link in the description down below. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now, as I mentioned in this video, I'm gonna be covering how to create a pop-up in React, and we're gonna make sure to use portals in React, which is the best way to handle pop-ups, and I'm going to explain why later as we get to that point. Also, if you wanna learn even more about React portals, I have a full blog post on it. I'll link in the cards and description down below. Now to get started, I ran create react app and I deleted out all of the code that we're not going to need. And I added in just a little bit of boilerplate so we don't have to type this out. Essentially, I have here a button for opening up our modal. modal and I have here just some other information on the page just so I can show you the problem you're gonna run into when creating a modal. I also have some really basic styles set up I have some Z index properties applied to this wrapper around our button, and then some more Z index and color changing stuff for this other content down here. And all we want to do is have this button open up some form of modal. So let's create a component called modal, which is going to be our modal content that we're gonna open up whenever we click our button. So we have a modal, and in here, we're just gonna say something like fancy modal. And when we render this modal, we want this text to be shown inside of that modal. So what we need to do is come over here and create a modal.js. Now I have an extension installed, so I can just hit RFC enter and it'll create a function component for me. All you need to do is come over here and find ES6, ES7, I'm sorry, React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. And that's going to give you this exact same shortcut that I used here. So now once we have that created, we know that inside of our modal, we're passing down something called children. And this children property is just this text inside of here. So for now, let's just render out our children. And if we save this, come over here and import modal, which is going to be from dot slash modal and save. You can see our modal is being rendered right here, right after our button. And for now, that's okay. We don't have all of our styling yet for our modal and we don't have it opening and closing. So let's next work on this open close feature. We're gonna need to have some state to do that. So we're gonna come in here with use state and we're gonna set up some state for open and closed. So we're gonna say is open and set is open. And that's gonna be use state by default. We're gonna set that to false. And then on our modal, we're just gonna say open is going to be equal to here is open. And then when we click our button, we want to open it. So we can say on click, we wanna set this here to a function. And all this function is going to do is just gonna set is open to be true. And if we save this, you're gonna notice again, nothing's actually happening. And that's because in our modal, we aren't actually using that open prop. So if we are not open, we'll just return nothing. So if not open, then we just wanna return here null. So we're not gonna render anything, but if we are open, then we're gonna render our actual content. So if we save, you can see our modal is not open. And when we click this button, you can see our modal is going to open up. Now that's great, but we need some way to close our modal. So let's add a button in here. We can just say button, and this button is gonna say close modal. We just wanna say on click. We're gonna call a function which is gonna be called on close. And we're gonna pass that in here, so on close. So when this button is clicked, we're gonna call this on close function. And this on close function, we're gonna define over here. So on close, all we're gonna do inside of here Oops, as we're going to call, our set is open and we're gonna pass in false. Now, if we save, click open modal, you can see we have our close modal button as well as our actual text. And if we click close, it's gonna close it. We can do this as many times as we want. Now, this is the basics of our modal, but let's go ahead and add some styles and we're gonna immediately notice some problems. So let's come up here. I'm gonna say modal styles. This is just going to be equal to an object. So we're going to set a position here, which is going to be fixed because we want this to always be fixed on our page. We want the top to be 50%. We want the left to be 50%. Just like that. We're also going to set up a transform to center our object. So we're going to say translate 
And we want to do negative 50% and negative 50%. This is going to make it so our modal appears dead center in our screen. We're going to give it a background color, which is going to be white. We can say FFF. And we're also going to come in here with a padding of 50 pixels just to give it a little bit of space. And then lastly, we want this to appear on top of everything. So we're going to give it a Z index of 1000. And now if we set those styles here, so we can say style is going to be equal to those modal styles and we save. When we open this, you're going to see our modal is appearing dead center in our screen. Now, in order to make this modal a little bit better, another thing that I want to do is add in some kind of overlay that goes over the rest of our content. So to do that, let's just set up a fragment here. And this fragment is going to contain all of our current modal code. And then up here, we're going to create another div, which is going to have a style, which we're going to set to overlay styles. And we're just going to close off this div. This div is going to be for our black color that's going to obscure everything else on our page. So we could say overlay styles. Make sure that has an S. And we come in here and these overlay styles, it's going to be very similar. We're going to have a position, which is fixed. We're going to have a top of zero, a left of zero, a right of zero, a bottom of zero. So it's going to cover the entire page and our background color here is going to be RGBA. We just want this to be completely black. We want it to be partially transparent. So we'll use 0.7. And then lastly, we're going to use the same Z index of 1000. So it appears above everything else. And now we're going to save, click open modal, and you're going to immediately notice a problem. And this is what happens when you don't use portals, when you try to render this type of overlay content that goes outside of its children. So what happens is this other content section is appearing over top of this overlay that we've created here. And the reason that this is happening, if we go back into our app, is that this modal is inside of this div, which has certain styles applied to it. And these styles essentially create a stacking context in CSS. You don't need to know what this is, but all it means is that elements inside of it can never appear over top of the Z index here of one. While this is the index here is a two for our red other content. So our red other content is appearing over top of this button wrapper, which means it appears over top of our modal. And this is a big problem. We don't want to have this happen inside of our app. We want our modal to appear above everything else, no matter what. So the way to do that is by using portals in React. Normally, when you render something in React, we go over here to index.js, you'll see that we have our app, which we're rendering inside of the root element in our index.html. And if we open up that index.html, you see we have this div root here. But what if we want to render something not inside the root? What if we wanted to have another div, which is going to have an ID here of portal? And what if we wanted to render our modal inside of this portal? Well, to do that inside of a React, we could really easily do that by using react.createPortal. So inside of our modal here, let's import Oops, import react dom from react dash dom. This is what property here has that actual method for creating our portal. And down here, inside of a return, what we want to do is react dom dot create portal. And this create portal is going to take the element we want to create, for example, our modal here. And then after that, what it's going to do is it's going to take a place we want to add that element. So just like an in index.js, when we have react dom dot render, we have our element and then we have the place to render it to. So in our modal, this is just going to be document.get element ID, and this is going to be our ID of portal. Now, when we save this and click open modal, you can see that this modal is showing up over everything else. If we actually inspect this and look at our actual HTML elements here, if I just make this a little bit bigger, you can see that we have two divs. We have our portal div and our root div. And this root div contains here our modal button, as well as our other content. And then our portal div here contains our actual portal and the overlay itself. So we have our closed modal and our fancy modal here, all of that's inside this portal div here. So what we've done is we've essentially, inside of our app, we have a component, which is a children of some other components. And we forced this child component here to render outside of its parent by creating a portal to somewhere else. And this portal is this div here. So now we're rendering this modal inside of that div, even though it's a child of a different component. And the real thing that makes this super powerful is that you have event delegation built into this in a way that all of the events on this modal are gonna delegate up to the parents of this modal. So normally when you click on a button, for example, that's inside of a div, 
the div is going to get that event. So we can say on click here and set this to just a simple function, which is going to call console.log of clicked, just like that. And now when we click on anything inside of this div, for example, this button, it's going to propagate that on click up to this div, and we're going to see that being logged out. So if we come over here go to our console, and if we click on this open modal, you're going to see it says clicked here. And that's because we clicked inside of this div container. But with React portals, what happens is that this modal is inside of this div inside of our JSX. But in reality, it's rendered outside of the div. Because if we go to our elements here, you know that this div portal is where our modal is being rendered. And it's not actually being rendered inside of this div here. But when we click inside of this modal, you're going to see this clicked is going to be printed out. As you can see, when we click here, it's delegating that event up from our modal here all the way up to this div, which is actually capturing that and then logging out that click. So this is something that's really powerful with React Portal is that it allows you to keep that child parent relation when it comes to click events and when it comes to rendering out your content in JSX, but you can actually render that content somewhere else by taking advantage of this portal. If we were to instead come into our modal here and instead of doing create portal, we were just to do what we have in our index here, which is render. So if we just said render like this, everything is going to work essentially the same. It's going to look like it works exactly the same, but this clicked here, it's not going to actually fire when we click inside of our modal. And that's because portals, when we did create portal here, whoops, create portal, this is what actually allows us to do that event delegation, while render does not allow us to do that. So if you're going to need to do something where you have a modal or some other element like a tooltip where you need to render it always on top of things or outside of the current route, make sure that you use a portal to do that. And it's going to keep intact all of that event delegation as well as parent-child relations that you definitely want to keep. And that's all there is to React Portal. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my complete React course. I have links down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.